Hi there, welcome to another edition of Chrysalis on the Couch. I'm Kay, a tutor for Chrysalis, and um, I'm going to be your host for today. And today I'm joined by Kerry. Hi, I'm Kerry Anderson. I'm a third year student with Chrysalis. And Byron. Hi, I'm Byron. I'm a tutor with Chrysalis. And Eddie. Hi, I'm Eddie and I'm a second year student with Chrysalis. Okay, so we've got a nice assortment today. Um, and today we're going to talk about taming our inner child. So if you enjoy this, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. So the inner child, what is that? Well, inside of us all is that small child. And that small child sometimes tries to take over our life. Um, it may want to get attention. Your inner child might be hurt or sad or scared or angry. Maybe it didn't get its needs met. It may feel restricted because it has to repress its feelings. It may always be on its best behavior because it had to be adaptive. Or because of that, it may become a people pleaser. Or it could be a very rebellious and unruly child that's inside you who just wants to have tantrums. So certain situations and certain people can sometimes trigger our inner child to come out. And while it is, it's a good thing to be creative, spontaneous, feel as though you can act childlike, not childish, but childlike. But the trouble is when our inner child takes over, it can affect our relationships and our life and it's not always beneficial. So, Byron, when does your inner child come out? Well, probably right about now I'd say, right? Um, <clears throat> yeah. but, but this kind of thing, you know, when, when kind of being observed in you and, and, um, and, and, you know, as you kind of click record, you know, it's just that uncertainty of, you know, how will I be received, you know, and how will, um how will my words land you know and that kind of thing and just you know you certainly remember that when I was um younger you know with that that idea when they used to kind of go around the class and used to think to yourself um well not me not me and invariably it would be <clears throat> you and then you have this kind of <sighs> tongue-tied thing and uh, you know I kind of see that quite a lot as we certainly in the earlier groups um when you kind of do the teaching, whether it's with Chrysalis or whether it's a mindfulness group, you know, that initial break in that silence, you know, so, so I don't think it's kind of um, like solely me for whom that kind of happens, but it's, it's certainly, um, yeah, it, it's certainly kind of a challenge. It's, it's that in meeting people, I suppose that, you know, and, and it's a slightly more difficult process when you don't know the people whom you're meeting. So, um, so certainly that, um, and also, I think um, kind of goodbyes I really kind of struggle with that, which, which is really interesting as a therapist, right? So the end of um, where we kind of do a lot of a lot of goodbyes. So um, it's yeah, it's something that I have to kind of take a little bit of time to think about and manage that. Some kind of conscious is there. You, know, you get used to kind of sitting with it, but it, you know, you can always. For me, it's a like a like a slight palpitation. You know, nothing too extreme, but you can you can feel it. Um, was that yeah. because would you I mean we're all different aren't, aren't we and I didn't have a bad childhood or anything but I was very very painfully shy so mm -hmm. in class if, a, if the teacher started going around the room like you said I'd try and hide I would be like please don't ask me anything because that is painful and I think it, it took a long time to get over that for me but I am over it now I don't care at all and that's very freeing and and lovely to feel like that but you know do you know where yours actually sort of came from why you hurt to that yeah so I mean 
so so the family was you know was great so you know i've got support of um friends and family but i came over from from south africa originally so i went to um so i had a bit of a funny accent compared to the heart of the welsh valleys so um my accent wasn't received very well and there would be like kind of a lot of mocking and teasing not necessarily about the kind of content or anything like that um and it was yeah it, i mean you know you call it bullying right but it was it was certainly a real challenge for me i was um yeah kind of undermining the confidence at at uh, kind of early um say what would you what are you about 10 11 when you first start high school um so yeah. yeah that was so that was a real challenge but you know again i was really supported by people so I, at the same time, whilst it brings up anxiety, I, I tend to have a general faith that things will end out, end up all right in the end, and that's kind of the, the kind of CBT self talk I sometimes bring in, just to the reassurance. And, mm. uh, yeah, so it's yeah. So I hope that's along the right the the, the right lines in terms of <laughs> end, but, but but yeah. Okay. So Eddie, what about you? Um, I think my inner child has got a split personality, to be honest, because one half of it is like this perfectionist pick me, like I need to be seen to doing everything perfectly. And then the other part of it is just the most rebellious little munchkin you can imagine. Just any authority, no, not interested, want to go against it. You know, that big red button. I'm that kid who just wants to press it. Um, so, yeah, I've got those kind of two contrasting elements to my inner child I think that just likes to bubble up every now and again mm. so you know often you've got that part of you that is that adaptive child that does as it's told and wants to please others but then you can't be totally happy with that part of you so you end up being the rebellious rebellious naughty child as well yeah, yeah definitely I think that perfectionist feels very confined whereas that more rebellious free child is more up my alley <laughs> <laughs> so is there sort of a time when one comes out or the other can you recognize any like triggers for when they particularly show themselves uh, I mean certain people definitely trigger certain things um Definitely, if I'm in a situation where, you know, maybe I'm at college doing, um, like at Chrysalis, doing my normal course, then I will I will slip very easily into that perfectionist need to appear to be doing everything right kind of person. Um, but there are definitely characters that bring out that rebellious streak in me. And if I'm surrounded by them too much, I can feel myself getting a little bit overconfident with them, what I might get up to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe we don't need to know about that <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad <laughs> yeah okay so Kerry what what do you think about yours um I think mine is uh my inner child is a very much people pleaser um and I find it very hard as a result to say no to people to you know even when I know it's the right thing to do that kind of urge comes out and it's like no 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 you want to do this you want to fix this you want to make this better um and it's uh, it's, it's very much a people pleaser but I interestingly I revert much more to my childlike state when I'm either really really stressed or poorly um and if I'm if I'm not well it's when I was a child, if I wasn't well, that was when my dad would look after me mm -hmm. and feel really special and let me lay on the sofa and make me soup and all that kind of stuff. And so when I get poorly now, I mean, I've just got over COVID and all I want to do is lay on the sofa and drink soup, you know, and, and there's nobody to make it for. Me. <laughs> 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 and the kids are busy and, you know, and, it's, and, and all I want to do is revert to that childlike state. And I, I kind of feel a little bit hard done by that. I've still got to parent and I've still got to do stuff and, and everything. So, yeah, I get a little bit into yeah. my um, in that sort of situation I had that same sort of experience because when I was poorly as a kid I mean when I was a kid it was a long time ago and we had TVs about like 12 inches big you know my dad used to actually bring the TV up for me and then I'd always want soup and mashed potato <laughs> and so that you know we can carry things like that into our adulthood if I feel 
I'm well, I might want to eat soup and mashed potato. But like you, I've got I've got no one to look after me now. Um, but there's been times when I felt a little bit out of sorts and my granddaughter's come round and I'm like, can you brush my hair? <laughs> <laughs> I go all child like, you know, can you brush my hair? Because that's another thing. My dad used to sit and brush my hair, which was often quite knotty and he'd get it all unknotted, but he'd be much gentler than my mum and I sort of remember sitting on the floor so again that's something that's quite comforting and soothing to me having my hair brushed yeah I even like going to the hairdressers just to get my hair my head played with <laughs> you don't have that problem Byron <laughs> I used to get my mum used to brush my hair after baths and um I would go in like into the front room and sit on the floor and we'd watch telly and she'd brush my hair and stuff and if I have a bath now I've got to have time out in my own room away from everybody for a little while just to relax and stuff it's like I need to go back into that safe space just for a little while just to normalize before I can then go and be mum again mm. I mean, obviously, for a lot of people, depending on what sort of childhood you've, you've had, you know, our inner child, we're not always aware of, mm. of what it's doing. And it can come out in very inappropriate ways sometimes. Um, and that, that might be with sort of anger tantrums or we might just feel really sad in, in some situations. And obviously, so that's something we might see in our clients and I remember working with a a young lady well she was in her 30s but she was still very much a child the child inside her inner child would come out every time her partner said anything to her that she took as a slight criticism um and she was sort of put in her dad's head onto her partner because her dad didn't really listen to her and was always criticizing. And she'd carried this forward into life, you mm -hmm. know, and every time her partner said just the slightest thing, they'd end up having a blazing row. And she was totally unaware of this inner child inside of her. Um, but I think once you've brought it to your attention, you can start to then work on it and, and tame it. So have you had any experience of that, you know, with yourself or with anyone that you've you've worked with or anything or friends that, you know? One of my friends is um, quite an interesting case because she she's always trying to diet. And but she's her own worst enemy, because if someone tells her she can't have something, her inner child is constantly going yes you can yes you can you should yeah forget about them you do it you, and she's mm. constantly fighting this lo like a losing battle because her inner child is saying you know don't be restricted by rules and regulations and yet she's trying to stick to diets really rigidly and it's just it's she's constantly sabotaging herself mm. but these things really stick don't they because when I came home from school as a kid my mum gave me a packet of chocolate biscuits if I sat down and did my homework straight away. So mm -hmm. that association with that as a reward, you know, I still like a bar of chocolate and it's like, well, I want my bar of chocolate because it's soothing. You know, I've been a good girl today. <laughs> yeah. Quite funny, I, um, I just recently had a promotion at work and part of that promotion was a leadership role. And I, I probably went back and forth about whether I was going to take it for about three months because I couldn't get my head around the idea of being a leader. And I just I had such negative association with leadership that I was like, nope, not going to do it. No, nope, can't do it. Absolutely not. And we went back and forth and tried to find other words that would be more appropriate. But it felt like that inner child were like, no, nope, we don't like authority. Remember, we don't like authority. So you can't be one of those people. And it very, very nearly didn't take the promotion. Really, really close to not doing it. So I was really glad that I won out against that. Um, but yeah, it's really powerful. Mm. Byron, what was you going to say? Well, well, I guess it kind of feeds quite nicely into that. You know, so you know the um the the, the TA model, the parent adult child. You know, yeah. so you often kind of look at that in terms of um, cross transactions or you know complementary transactions from from side to side. But for me, I I quite like it as a model internally. You know, if you think about 
know, kind of reparenting yourself and using, um, you know, and noticing how you speak to yourself. You know, you feed into, um, you use the CBT model with that a little bit as well in terms of what's the dialogue like, you know, my critical parent or nurturing parent, you know, and, you know, what do I need? Because sometimes, so I, I don't see them necessarily as negative, but sometimes you need a bit of, um, you know, kind of a, a critical, but, you know, if you're doing something wrong and mm. you know it's not helpful, the nurturing parent, you know, done to excess cannot be very helpful but but generally I, you know, I've, I've noticed I would lean towards um the the if I'm having a rough time I'm probably too much in the in, in the kind of critical side of things and you and I and I know very well my kind of adapter child he was a bit he's either a bit ambivalent or a bit a bit stroppy um and um very passive aggressive kind of you know I'll stomp around and, you know, and that kind of thing and 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 I can and the, the, the weird thing is you know you can see yourself do it you know you have to and you can do it you can you allow it to play out I've just learned to allow it to play out for a little bit you know providing it doesn't you know set too poor, poor an example you know just uh, um and then you know rather than trying trying to criticize myself out of you know um and it was the adaptation if you like so I I, I really like the the TA model and, you know and and I, think I could apply it to kind of both those examples in terms of understanding what happens inside of you and so it's 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 really interesting as well when you I don't know this is gonna sound weird but I like watching people in cafes you know if you're waiting for someone to over the room of your teacup you're just going to watch those transactions and you can see people become very playful visually don't they when um when we when you can watch them from a distance you can see you know oh they're an adult you know they're in child <laughs> um they you know, and you can see people turn their backs over so slightly when they're sulking. It, you know, it, it's it, it's really really interesting. You can kind of, um, I'm not going to kind of creepy or anything like that, but it, you know, it is quite interesting to watch. Um, you know, the, the non-verbal side of you know of of the inner child as well. So, um, yeah, that was it. Was just a little comment because I I don't know how often it's kind of done, but to look at the transactions, um, happening inside of yourself and, um. And then, to, and, and then to watch other people and think, oh my God, I do that. You know, because I don't like, you know, because you look at it, I don't like the way that looks. And you think, well, I do that. And that's unfortunate, you know. I think there's there's a lot of ways of helping your inner child. You know, if you if you didn't have your need met, needs met and your, your child has got very low self-esteem, for example, you know, I get um, some of the people I work with to get out a photograph of them when they were young maybe at their sort of scariest time in life when they weren't happy and put it on their wall and every day they have to say, good morning, little one, I love you. And it really does make a difference. You know, mm. they start to sort of connect more with that, that child because it's very easy as well to disconnect on a conscious level and not want to sort of have anything to do with that child, but it will still keep popping up every now and then. Mm. Good to be childlike sometimes, isn't it? I like to sort of go off and jump ditches and you know do do stupid things that um, I did as a kid. Um, because it's, it's nice to bring those sort of memories back, you know, if you've got good memories. But if you haven't, obviously it's it's different, and then you've got to try and bring that child out a bit more. Mm. You know, you definitely still get excited with like the two P machines. You know, there's no financial value. Oh yeah. But you know, I see them. You know, but or the smell of donuts past the Western, you know, um, Western Supermare PA. You know, you, 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 it's you know, olfactory. You know, it can bring it can bring back all those memories like you know, just like that. So that's amazing. And, mm. and I, 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 it's it's amazing how some people like I. If my friends are coming to say that, you know, again, it sounds a bit, but you know, I get excited. You know, you feel like a child. Oh, they're going to come and we're going to play. You know, we might play computer games or you know, we might just <laughs> chat. But and uh, but then you know, is when they because I said before, so in South Africa, you know, South Africa houses are a little bit further apart, so you can just kind of pop down the road to see your friends. You know, it would be kind of a planned visit. So there's always a kind of sadness when they go. I definitely feel that you know when when they go in the morning, you know. I'll, I'll leave it to last minute to make, <laughs> make them some tea or coffee. I'll just stay for it. Don't even fall asleep, you know. So I don't like. So I noticed that you kind of do those things, and, and it is kind of. I think it's it's the child in you. I don't want to lose my. You know, I don't want to lose my friend, and 
Mm. Um, but it, yeah, but yeah, don't really have a point beyond that. Slightly. So more. that's your that's your thing about endings. You don't like endings, really. Yeah. Mm. I think my inner child has a bit of a grump every now and then with them. Um, when I try and do something with my, my children that like I did with my mum and dad and they don't appreciate it, I get very kind of grumpy. <laughs> so mm -hmm. like, I'll make them something or you know, my mum used to make or I'll you know, play a game with them that we used to play or whatever and they just don't seem to appreciate it. And that, that inner child gets quite hurt. It's really weird. It's like, well, you know, they're, they're kids, they're in a different age, they're, you know they've got different things it's obvious they're not going to want to do necessarily what i wanted what i did when i was you know back yonder in the day but um but yeah it's it's amazing how much it actually affects you emotionally yeah i haven't really thought about that but when i was young we often used to play names and i don't even i don't even know who invented it but we started at a and you had to write down as many names as you could beginning with a and then we'd somebody would read out and the one who got the most names that no one else had, you know, won the game and we'd go through from A to Z. And for some reason, I hate games, but for some reason, I always liked playing that game. And now if anyone says, should we play a game? I'm like, well, let's play names. And everyone's like, no, we don't want to play. <laughs> I'm like, oh, but why? It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose it's not just the game, is it? It's the memories tied up with playing that game. Yeah, definitely. Mm. <laughs> I've got a, a one of a friends that I know is um, very much a restricted child. She was brought up by her grandparents because her mum had um, postnatal depression and. She didn't go back to her mum's for a long time. And so she had these very elderly, strict grandparents bringing her up. And so she is often in her, um, I suppose, a, a controlling adult state. And she finds it very difficult to bring out that child and have any fun at all. And we've sort of fell out numerous times because what she does, because she's in her adult and is quite authoritative, she tells me off about things. You shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. And I'd just be like, that'd make me turn into a rebellious child. So I'd just do what I was doing even more. And then she'd get the right ump because she couldn't bring out that fun side of her. I've never really seen her having a lot of fun at all. Mm. It's, it's quite sad when people can't get in touch at all with their mm. inner child. You know, hers was just very much do as you're told. Um, and that's all she did. She never had any fun. Just to explain, so if I, when I hit the mute button, sorry, it's somebody's using power tools out there and I don't want it to kind of disturb the sound. Oh, right. So it's on mute for that reason. Okay. So. Mm. No, it's interesting. I read um, the book, the, uh, the Chimp, is it called The Chimp Paradox? Yeah. Quite interesting. It's a similar sort of thing, talking about you're in a chimp and, you know, when it wants to get out. And that was quite an interesting uh, thing. It was a little while ago that I read it now, so it's not at the top of my mind. But I wondered if you'd heard of it or read it. I think most people have uh, heard of that and it's quite popular. Yeah. <laughs> It's, um, you know, I mean, our, our sort of childhood beliefs affect us a great deal, don't they? Because all our, all our thoughts come from those beliefs and most of them are formed early in our childhood. Um, and not always helpful to us either, are they? Definitely not. I, um, I grew up in a competitive sport kind of background and um, so as a child it was pretty full on and I had to grow up very quickly and I, I guess that probably fed into the perfectionism um, aspect of my inner child um, but I've subsequently gone on to have children and um, I have to really rein myself in there was a time where my daughter came up to me um, and said mummy mummy I've drawn you this picture is it good enough for the fridge and I was like oh my goodness I've made this 
thing I've made this like level of perfection and fed it into my children as well like oh it can only go on the fridge if it's amazing whereas she was just really overjoyed with this beautiful picture and I'd allowed that kind of perfectionist streak to just flow into into them so I have to really really rein it in and try not to pass too much of that stuff down yeah it's it's hard isn't it because I it just reminded me of um Christmas trees because at Christmas our tree had to be just perfect and look beautiful so I wasn't allowed to put things on it you know it had to be done by parents so it looked right um whereas a lot of people have their kids put things on make things and put them on the tree don't they and I found that so difficult when I had my own kids and my grandkids and they make some trashy decoration <laughs> and they want to put it on the tree and I'm like well, this tree's oh, ugly pretty. <laughs> yeah but, but the kids draw you into the child that you know if you found them obviously you all could parents them that they just you couldn't they can do all kinds of things just to bring you in either positively or negatively you know and I love when they had the lego out you know it's just you know <laughs> it's just utter joy you know <clears throat> and it's like time just it just you know, I, I could lose an hour playing Lego, um, yeah. and then. But the thing is, when it, what's interesting I've noticed is if if they then shift into a task that you know or, or a game that I don't want to do, I find myself trying to re- you know internally rejecting that game because I don't want to play that one. I want to keep playing Lego. And of course, kids are very much you know um, certainly the, the age mine are they're from one to the the other. So I'm like. Come and play Lego with me. Come on, you know. Um, <laughs> so, it, but it's really, it is really interesting, and in that that kids can pull you into that, you know, uh, you know, positively or negatively, you know, with oh, you know, oh, you know, um, certainly like my daughter, for example, you know, when would she when she's playing with uh, Barbie dolls, you know, I have no objection to playing with Barbie dolls. So it's, um, I find that really interesting. But things like drawing. Like I never did it as a kid, so when because you know, my largely because my sister was really good at it, and I think, ah, oh. and she would get the, 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 the well done, that's amazing. And then it, they would bring it out for me, and I was like, well, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point? So I find, you know, so you, it definitely interacts the way that you, you are with your own children. Um, and it's if you can sit down and just do a little journal at the end, it's, it's fascinating just to see you know, the, the different levels of, um, complexity to you know because I thought I thought I was relatively intentional you know when I started the course um you know, two, two, six, 2016 I finished it and I thought it was really intentional it should come with a health warning shouldn't it? you know because you you, know, you you move through and you start to realize that you know there's a lot that about yourself that you don't realize and this is like Jung did a lot of me in a child didn't he and, um and I, I kind of kind of shrugged it off and thought oh yeah that's interesting and then you, you do some of it and it's it's just deep, right? And it, it's everything. It's it's the foundation from which you built. So, yeah. I think people don't think about it a lot of the time. You know, they just react um, and don't sort of analyze where it where it comes from. Hmm. I think everything we do, you know, is connected to what we've done in the past, isn't it? You know, and that you're talking about that game playing. I always was outside. I still love being outside. So if one of my grandkids wants to be outside doing something, that's great. If they want to play Monopoly, (laughs) I remember there was a period of time when I was about 10 and everybody was playing Monopoly and all my friends wanted to play Monopoly and I hated it so much. And now it's like I will refuse. I just can't play Monopoly. Let's go and play outside. You know, so I could be really playful when I'm outside. Mm. But yeah, we sort of carry everything through, don't we? Compromise and bring the monopoly outside. (laughs) No, because it involves sitting still and buying (laughs) stupid things. And yeah, I just hated it so much. (laughs) What did you uh, what did you used to like to play, Kerry? Oh, I was uh, an outdoorsy kind of person as well when I was younger I used to like going out on my bike and stuff like that but um, yeah so board games scared me a little bit too to be honest but um, the 
things like it's really simple games like i think they call it they call it sorry where you like mm. knock people off the board i just remember such arguments over those that is when the kids want to play them now i just think oh, i just i ready myself for an argument mm. and it's strange i just kind of prepare myself um and nine times out of ten it's absolutely fine but <laughs> It's funny, I'm kind of uptight when I'm doing it and not enjoying it in the way that I should, you know? Mm-hmm. When I think about those things that make me feel good as a, as a child and a sort of free child, you know, it is about things like going out on my bike with friends or roller skating, you know, mm-hmm. I used to love roller skating. And in my memories, everything was always sunny, it was always sunny. It's mm. like there was never a winter <laughs> when I think of these fun times. Um, and then when you remember things that weren't so good, it's winter. <laughs> uh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? But it's, I suppose it's like good and bad to me. It's like summer and winter. I don't like the, the cold. So I'm sort of transferring that onto my memories. Mm. One of the things that I remember... When I was when I was very young, um, there was like an Easter egg competition, and my mum helped me to make an Easter bonnet type thing, and I won the Easter egg from it. But my dad let me eat it before my mum got home from work, and she she was very very upset about it, and she told me that I was selfish. And for years, if I was like I wanted to eat something a bit naughty, I'd always feel really guilty afterwards because of that kind of association with that that time with my mum mm. a long time to kind of I had a lot of you know I had counselling to try and deal with that um and yeah that took a long time but that was definitely my inner child coming out each time you know giving me that feeling of guilt and almost remorse oh, that'd be quite good for me because it stopped me eating so much chocolate <laughs> it just made me feel bad <laughs> yeah no it's funny isn't it because I am very much still a child when it comes to Christmas and Easter and things. I have to feel all the presents. I try and look for them and find out where they are and what's inside. I have to feel everything and try and guess. And um, I just texted my daughter a little while, actually, and and said, um, can we do an Easter egg hunt with the kids? And she's like, oh, I suppose so. (laughs) It's like me who wants it, (laughs) you know. yeah, hiding Easter eggs and then going around and finding them and eating them. Yeah. And again, it's it's just me going back to nice nice times in childhood. Mm. Uh, it is always so disappointing when it doesn't live up to your memory, though, isn't it? Like when when you do it with other people or other people don't appreciate it in the same way. It's just like, oh, is it just me then? Am I the only person who thinks this is, is fun? It's really weird. Because mm, we've all got such different experiences, haven't we? You know, so what one of us finds exciting and brings out our child, uh, it will be something totally different for for someone else. And of I course, to, go on. So oh, no, you go. You go. I had a real killjoy moment last Friday. I'd had a really bad night the night before, and. Um, I am I love fun. I absolutely love spontaneous fun, but I cannot bear organized fun. Like if you tell me we're gonna have fun today, I'm like, nope, not interested. That's not gonna be, that's not gonna be cool. And I went into work and they were like, it's fun Friday, and we're gonna have loads and loads of fun. And I was honestly the most miserable, horrible person to work with for the day. I was like, nope, you are not gonna tell me how to feel fun. You're not gonna tell me what to do. Again that inner child came back like you're not going to tell me what I'm going to feel um but I I was just I was the most miserable person and I know I brought the mood of the entire place down and then afterwards I felt really really guilty about it but I can't I just can't do it (laughs) but it's fake as well it's a bit like laughter that I had to go when I was at a festival they were doing laughter yoga you've got to try it's like this false laugh you go around going (laughs) And it's like, it, it's just, I didn't find it funny at all. And people are just going around doing this false laugh. And it's supposed to be good for you. But I think if it's not, if it's not coming naturally, it's not going to have the right effect, surely. 
I don't think so. Mm. I, I don't know because they did that that psychology experiment, didn't they, where, where they asked people to hold a pencil in their mouth um, for I think like a minute and a half or something like that. I'm a bit shady on the length, but because it forces the muscles into a smile position, and they gave them a positive psychology questionnaire, and and ultimately people responded more positively when they had the pencil in their mouth than they did in other way because it was because of the muscle memory. So so it's probably based around something like that, but I guess. If it over time, it probably loses. I'm thinking it would lose its effectiveness. You know, once you, you know, and probably the more that you're aware of what it's supposed to be doing, I guess it demystifies and it probably is going to be less effective as well. But just just as a counter argument, but I, but yeah, because because I'm, you know, tr I'm trying to do it without a pencil. But... <laughs> <laughs> do, I feel, do I feel bad that? <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it just feels a bit weird. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because they got that power poses and stuff as well. Um, there's some TED talks on it. I haven't read any kind of literature around it, but but you know, anecdotally, it sounds like a good idea. If you sat, if if you stand in a particular position, it should help. So maybe laughing. Um, I've never done laughter yoga, but now I'm curious. I like. I feel like. That's an inner child. Whenever people tell me something interesting, or you know, I have to, I have to find out about it straight away. But also, slightly could be impulsive that way. If I'll buy, I'll buy a book when I can't afford it. You know, ooh, you know, pursuit of knowledge. You know, mm. Laugh. Mm. You know, you know. Yeah, I found it a bit makeup. weird. <laughs> if anyone puts any makeup on my face, I'm like, right, I'm buying it all every single time. <laughs> <laughs> mm. have you, has anybody ever gone through an old photo album and had? And and you know, then before you mentioned um, that that you know it's never like as you remember and 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 certainly my dog was massive and I went back it was a Staffordshire Bull Terry you know and um, it's it, it's phenomenal you know you, you think like it, it it's helpful in one way kind of therapeutically because the way that you see the world you know you can see that it was just a different lens not it wasn't false or diff it was just a different way of seeing the world and um it, it was enormously helpful to go back and look at um uh, like my my mum's and my granddad's old photos because i as a child and i didn't like to look at them you know just didn't like to look at the photos and i go back and look at it i thought oh things are rather beautiful weren't they or people were rather short really they they're big compared to me but they were not these giants that i imagined them to be mm -hmm. um so yeah and our house was a mansion it wasn't it, it was it was probably bigger than the standard house because it was in south africa but it was um but it, it wasn't this enormous multi-dimensional multi-story building it was just a two-story building that just happened to be a little bit bigger i was i don't know if anybody's done that and you've gone back and looked at old photos and what was the experience of that that was mine kind of when when i was younger like my more i suppose 11 12 go, going into senior school i had quite a bad body image mm. Interesting looking back at pictures of yourself when I was that sort of age now I'm looking at myself and going I don't understand why I had a, such a bad yeah. image of myself you know there's nothing wrong size-wise of you know, there's there's absolutely nothing untoward there yeah in my head I was this huge person and and I was really unhappy with it but going back and looking at them you think well you know having a rational head on your shoulders and that you know you look at it differently don't you mm. Mm. I like looking at all the old photos I think it's really you know I'm a great lover of photos I'm always taking photos I've got hundreds of albums and the idea is when I get old and I can't do anything else I'm going to sit and look at all the things that I've done and all the memories yeah. um, but I tend to be going through it and thinking oh I used to love that dress or I love those jeans and you know all the things that I I really liked or there's like holidays in Cornwall where I'm rolling down one of the big sand dunes in Perrinport and you know that they so they bring nice memories back but my my earlier childhood you know as I say I was so shy I didn't have any confidence I'd scream when someone comes to the door I've no idea why I was really like that. Um, and now I'm so different that I can't sort of feel a connection to that younger yeah. child at all. It's just like, well, who the hell is she? <laughs> you know, because that's not who I am now. So I sort of feel like it was different when I was a teenager because that's when I became really confident. But those earlier years, I'm like, oh, 
funny little thing she was. <laughs> mm. Funny, I, I, said, oh God, I sorry, sorry I, I see my younger child. I see in my daughter now quite a lot of the things she, she does. I see her replicating moods and attitudes and behaviors and and i think oh that's just that's so much like i was that's you know it's really coming out in her so i had the experience of um going back to my old school recently so i now work in the school that i um, used to go to and i absolutely detested school like so much so that i'd be sick every day it was awful really really negative connotations with school especially like as a teenager um, and going back now I wondered how I'd feel and I kind of walked in thinking hey this is so much smaller than I remember it being I'd like I'd projected it into this like absolutely ginormous building with, you know loads of sub buildings that were still massive and just totally over the top and I walked in and it's just like oh okay, I don't feel sick at all. I don't feel any of those feelings that I used to feel. What was all that about? Just really, really strange to think that I'm now back in there helping young girls who are in a similar situation to I was. Um, and I just look at it and think, how? How was that me? It's just bizarre. I think we're going to see ourselves, because we were so much smaller, everything's going to seem bigger than it really was. You know, I mean, my granddaughter's dog is you know the same level as her and I think that must that must seem bigger than a horse mustn't it to, to her mm. um but I mean how did that affect you when you came to college to do this course and Eddie you know was that like going back to school for you or not yes and no um I think because it was totally my choice to do this that's a different again it's that rule keeping being told what to do I'm not very good at and um, whereas if I'm choosing to do something it's slightly different um but I've done a lot of work on myself from that teenage girl who couldn't even bear to walk in the building to now and kind of figured out what that was all about but um it was definitely a challenge going back into education for sure and um, because it's such a measured it's it's so measured by your output isn't it rather than your intent um so um, again it's always like oh is it enough um that constant question is it enough is it good enough is it perfect and um, that's when the inner child just kind of rears its head and reminds me that, that is innately who I am and I have to really fight against it um so yeah it's definitely been challenging going back into that setting um and yeah sometimes I feel myself like actually biting my tongue off to stop interrupting or putting my hand up or shouting out or what have you because it's just so innately in me uh, so yeah it's been interesting I think it'd probably be good for everyone to keep a, a journal of when our inner child comes out you know and and sometimes that's going to be fine and other times we need to challenge what it's what it's trying to do don't we and I think that'd be really useful for, for everyone to do um that help them tame their inner child and and challenge some of those early beliefs but i'm sure we could talk lots more but it's it's time to stop so we've got to go but if you've enjoyed our little chat today please give us a like and subscribe to our channel and watch out for the next Chrysalis on the Couch, which will be coming sometime soon. But for now, it's goodbye from us. So cheerio. Bye. Bye.